Well, hello guys. It is Friday evening and I have probably one of the most controversial things on trucker forums and YouTube. And if you know kind of what I'm drawing here, you already know where I'm going with this. But anyways, this that I'm drawing here pertains to like N14s, 855s, uh, 444s, uh, early model N14s with STC injectors, um, so on and so forth. Basically all those 855 uh, displacement tractors, N14s, all that. So when you're setting the valves on those, if you know anything about them, you've probably heard the term outer base circle and inner base circle. And the reason that I'm doing this is I was just just finished doing a head job on a triple four and not my favorite engine by any means. Happy to see it go. Don't really like working on these STC engines. Anyways, that said, uh, I'm trying to find, or I was while I was doing it, trying to find procedure for setting the injectors and other things. And it's very difficult to find. So if you're like me, I'm hopefully going to make it simpler for you. I'm not going to be able to give you every spec for every engine, but I'll hopefully be able to help you with the inner base circle versus the outer base circle because I have racked my brain for years now. And every time I touch one of these things, I have to basically relearn it. And I've kind of in the process of doing that, I've gotten good at understanding these two methods. So let's talk inner base circle first. I don't do this method. Um, I've almost never seen a need for this. Um, just as far as the injector type and anything actually calling for it. So if you look here, this is my camshaft. Okay, this is not a perfect circle, but that's just because I'm not good at drawing. But imagine this part within this dotted line on this side of it. This is a perfect circle. So then here's your lobe, and this lobe is what lifts your push rod and in turn rocks your rocker and pushes down and injects your fuel. So when they say inner base circle, what they're meaning is essentially this dimension to this dimension. This is the innermost diameter of the camshaft circle. Okay, so then obviously outer base circle. Okay, but we'll get to that. So when you're setting them this way, this is the way that when you're looking at forums or in a manual, hopefully a manual, this is the way that it'll tell you to set them to like six inch pounds or basically take out the lash on the rocker to where there's zero uh, lash and then turn another 90 degrees. So the reason that you do that is because this plunger is up, right? It's not sitting down in that seat. So you're basically bringing this down to here and you're just setting just just going past zero lash and that is inner base circle and you would do that on not top stop injectors but the other style uh i can't remember what they're called just about everything nowadays though i'm pretty sure as top stops or like has been switched to that and okay let's talk outer base circle for a second so you can see outer base circle now outer base circles when you do it during the camshaft lift so this let's say is on a on your pulley so that would be one or six cylinders okay so let's just say it's one for example so when we're on cylinder one, it's not actually TDC on these engines, okay? If you look when the injector's out, that piston is not at the top of the cylinder. 
So when you're on A, number one, your valves are closed, but you're actually on a the beginning of a power stroke. So the reason is this injector is coming up. Okay, this push rod's coming up and the injector's getting pushed down. So when that injector gets pushed down, the fuel that's in here gets squished out through your nozzle. Okay, and this is when you're setting the injector. So this one is when you do the 60 inch pounds or on the triple four, it's 90 inch pounds. Um, some people go to 75 or whatever on the 855s. It's really, it's not as critical and daunting as people make it sound. It really isn't. All you're doing is bottoming out this needle inside of this injector, okay? And then on the N14s, you, uh, you bottom it out. There isn't even a spec for torque. You just bottom it out and then you back it out two flats. So you're essentially bottoming this out and then you're just lifting it up a little bit. So that kind of, and then on the STC N14s, you're going 125 inch pounds here and you don't back it out at all. So where it becomes troublesome, is you can see on inner base circle, if you were to set, if you were to go here and bottom this plunger out with your adjuster here, okay, your adjuster's here. If you bottom that out to this spec on inner base circle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this plunger into here and then as this cam lobe comes around, it's going to want to lift this push rod, but there's going to be nowhere for it to go because you're already bottomed out in, in your inner base. So if your inner base is already bottomed out, when this cam lobe rocks, this, all this mechanism has nowhere to go. So you're probably going to, at that point, bust the tip off your injector and potentially more. I don't know. I've never done it don't care to try for it so i personally don't like inner base i don't use it outer base is nice because you're going to set the valves so you're going to set one intake one exhaust and the injector all on the same cylinder so it's really easy because on inner base you're jumping all over the freaking place because uh, instead of doing it like this, how our valves are closed and our injector is firing, there you're going to be doing valves on one cylinder, but then your, your injector you're going to be doing on another hole because you need to do it where it's in this position. And I don't know, it's just stupid, it's confusing, I don't like it. This has worked for me on countless engines. This is the way I always do it and never had a problem but this is just trying to clear trying to make sense to anybody who's trying to figure out what the heck anyone's talking about about inner base circle and outer base circle it's not that difficult people just make it sound really 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 complicated and it can be difficult to read on the internet about what the heck people are talking about but that's what it means and then same thing throughout your whole thing so after you do a on number one you'll go over to b and then on b you'll be on number five because uh, it's goes in its firing order so then you're going to set the intake the exhaust and injector on five and then you go to c and you'll do uh three and so on and so forth until you do the whole engine and it's super easy 10 times better to do it this way and that is the difference between inner base circle and outer base circle hopefully this helps somebody so i was just while i was watching that video and trying to put this out <clears throat> i thought of one other thing too so when you there has been lots of times when People have made valve adjustments 
to a perfectly running engine and then uh, they have wrecked these injector tips or other running issues. And the reason for that, okay, is down here, this is your crank, this is your cam, and this is your accessory drive. So the accessory drive is what's, what you're going to be barring on to turn the engine over. There's an inch and five sixteenths socket on the front of there. Okay. And here's your A, B, and C mark. So when you're, when you're turning this engine over, um, and then there's usually a little pointer here, right at A, but this is where you want to set it when you take an accessory drive off. And what a lot of people do is they pull the accessory drive off, do whatever repair they're having to do, whether it be the accessory drive or cam follower boxes or whatever the heck they're doing in there. And then they just stick that accessory drive right back in wherever. Okay. But here's the important thing. This is your crank timing, cam timing. So these will never come out and your engine will run fine. But then if someone comes along to do a valve set one day and this and this was never timed. So let's say that your timing mark was here. Now you're going to be on A because that's where your pulley is going to be pointed to. But, you know, so this would actually be here because your pulley is going to be there. But your cam might be over here. And this becomes a problem now when you're setting outer base circle or inner base for that matter. Because you're basically going to have this effect that I was talking about where you where you bottom this plunger out, not on outer base circle. The thing about outer base circle is that you're on the absolute highest point of this cam lobe. So this is the tightest that this is ever going to get. Whether this goes backwards or forwards, it's only going to get looser on this here. So if some monkey gets in here and doesn't time this, you're going to do this 100%. You're going to wreck these. So if you are ever skeptical that things aren't making sense, or usually what I do is there's going to be a set amount of threads showing behind your little nut here. And if you make your first adjustment, and it's way off or one thread off from the one next to it you, you 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 might be skeptical that this is not right so then what you need to do is pull this pulley off and right in here there's a little pipe plug you take that pipe plug out and you should be able to see the two timing marks in there and i'll insert a picture of that so you guys can see what that looks like but this is basically early model cummins um, valve set uh, lesson <laughs> so anyways hopefully that helps